Hello audience. This time we're going to be looking at switching between however many objects that we want randomly using a for each loop in our first foray into for reaching. Now for each loops are going to take, for example, a point or a bunch of points and run through every single one of them and do something to them. Uh, what it does is totally up to us and we're going to be using it to switch between two different inputs. So first off, let's put down a uh, for each point. And what we need in to go into this is our points. And we need inside of it our copy to points. And then and we need the box just as normal. So it's essentially just being placed in between our rotation and our for each. So now what we have is we have a single point selected and we're seeing what it's doing to it. You can turn on single pass on the for each end and run through each individual point. And hopefully you should understand what it's doing now. So it's just going through each individual point. And why this is useful is that we can say for different points, we want the rotation to be different or we want the object that goes into it to be different. So what we do is we put down a switch which allows us to switch the input. So if I go and create another input for this, which will be our sphere. I'm going to click L to organize it. We can switch between these two inputs. But we need to have a way of controlling this, this input so where it will switch on only certain points or randomly on certain points, which is what I'm going to be doing. So the way we do this is that we include it inside our for each loop. Um, or at least we access attributes within our for each loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a spare input here, which is going to be our for each begin. And we're going to reference this. I wonder if it says here. Yep. So ref reference this as minus one. So it's doing the opposite of what we would do if we were referencing these objects. This is object zero and this is object one. But as a spare input, it goes negative. So if we have another spare input here, it's going to be minus two. Um, we just we just ignore that input though, so uh, let's go and delete that one. But then we need an attribute to reference from our for each begin because it's essentially going here, and it, uh, we get the attribute from these points. So the way I'm going to do that is by creating another wrangle. And what we could do is we could do a random expression which will randomize between zero and one. I talked about this in my vex tutorial, which you can find in the top right hand corner. Um, but the way I'm going to be doing it is using a sort SOP, which is so useful. I love this SOP. Um, and the method that it uses to randomize point number is brilliant because it's actually going to keep the structure um, of integers. And we're going to still have the same numpt, aka the same max number of points. It's just reordering our points randomly. So where is it? No, we don't have point number here, do we? So if I do my new attribute called i at pt, it's an integer, and we're setting this to point number first, we're going to see that we've got this going from 0 to 26. And if I pin this and just bypass this, you're going to see that it's getting reordered because some of these attributes are changing, which is very nice. I love it. Um, and this is very useful because I want to randomly change these points. I don't want it to be, uh, you know, too obvious the way it's, it's, it's changing these inputs. And the way that we stick this to be going over and over and over again is, um, is do dollar or what's it called, a percentage, two. So what it's going to do now is it's going to, the inputs from this or the values from this are going to be zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one like this. If we had three, it'd be going zero, one, two, zero, one, two. I explained this function in my VEX tutorial as well. Um, so now all we need to do is access this integer inside our switch. And the way we do this is with a point function. So since it's a point attribute, we use point. You can also use primitive or you can use detail but obviously it's point attribute. 
And the first thing that we need to put in here is our surface uh, node. So that's going to be accessed by minus one. We can also do, um, if we open up our speech marks and do dot dot slash to go back one, we can actually access the node manually by doing our for each begin. Um, and that is the same same method. It's just a bit cleaner to use our spare input here. Ooh, there we go. And next up, we have our point number, which is always going to be zero because we are running through each individual point. So this object's point number is going to be zero. And then after this is the attribute we want to access. Now accessing attributes within HScript is a little different. We're just going to be doing open quotations and then doing PT, which is our attribute. Um, and then is our index. So we don't need to worry about this. So we just set it to zero. But if we had a float value, uh, zero, one, and two would access, for example, if we were accessing position, would access x as zero, y as one, and z as two. So just if you wanted to know what that does, but we just need to set it to zero because we're using an integer value, which is just a singular, singular value. And voila, random points, and we can randomize them using a seed. We could, um, do whatever we want. And this is all very good. You can even use transforms, for example, and then put uh, attributes in here using the same method. So we could copy this, paste it in here. And obviously since it's a, since it's a, what's it called? Um, and since it's a integer, it's just gonna be two, between two values. It's not gonna be ideal for what we want. But um, if you want a bit more control with your rotation, instead of using orient, you could do this. It's a bit slower, but for what we're doing here, it's fine. So as you can see, the ones that are cubes are being moved by one. Or the ones that are spheres, sorry, are going to be uh, moved by one. So um, that's just a little proof of concept there. You can do that. And then a way of making this very fast, or a bit faster than, than it normally is, um, for each loops are single threaded. So basically, it's going to be using one thread out of how many you have. So if you've got like a four core processor it's going to have eight threads and you want to be able to take advantage of your extra your fucking mass computing power then you compile this node or compile your for each loop so how you do that is you put in a compile block input our first uh, and then we just stick this in between our points and our for each begin stick this at the end and then we do multi-threaded when compiled and now it's multi-threaded, but we've got to do this on every single input into this little uh, for each. So what we can do is we duplicate this. We duplicate both of these actually. And I need to do fetch input on this now. And then I put this on each of our inputs to make this fully compiled. So now when I go and increase this to an incredible large amount, like this, oh damn, we don't even have enough. So you can see we've got 103,000, or is that a million? That's a million points here that we're copying to. And it's going relatively fast for a million. But if I was to do this without the compile, it's going to be A, much slower, and B, it's only going to use, I think it's uh, thread one or something like that. But as you can see, it's going way fucking slower than if I compile this. So um, yeah, that's what compiling does. And uh, yeah, all you have to remember is that when you're duplicating your block begin, make sure it's referencing the same, I'm going to put this on manual reload. Um, make sure it's referencing your for each, I mean your compile ends. Make sure you turn on multi-threaded when compiled and make sure that your for each begin is fetching the input and not uh, whatever it does by manual fetch piece or point because it's just going to fetch this input here. So I hope this helps you all. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video. Everything. I'm talking about my niggas, man. We be going so stupid, bro. I'm talking about, man. To the point where that shit don't even be cool, bro. We be in this party going stupid, bro.